Wow. That's how high time was for me. (laughs) Jeff, a a bunch of people told me, man, man, you should really sing high time. And then I, and I made a playlist, like everything and everybody ever suggested. I put it on this playlist and I listened, it just didn't hit me. And then Jeff, when you, when you said, you were like, man, high time. So I was like, dude, just learn it. Just don't listen to it and think how you feel about it. Just learn it. So I learned it for two months. It was stuck in my head in a good way. And remember, I think I texted you. I was like, man, I see what you were saying about that song. (laughs) (laughs) And now it's like my favorite, man. Kofi played that tune before he passed away. There's a tape of him taking his flute song, High Time. It's just, oh oh my God, wow. The crowd goes, and I just, and I look back on the lyrics of that song now. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time living the good life. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. I think I remember I was, uh, I mean, maybe like we you didn't, we didn't perform it or you didn't sing it uh, publicly, but I think it was like maybe a, a month or two period. But I think, I think I remember us being like in a, in a um, one of our dressing rooms and we were just working on it. Yeah. The two Asked of you us to play it with me. Yeah. And then, uh, then, then it brought it into the live show not too long after that, you know, but it's, uh, yeah. That was the first time Bob ever handed me off a song. He wanted to do it, remember, and have us split it and mm. alternate verses. And then later on, he was like, man, you go ahead and take it. And I was wow. like, you want me to sing the whole thing? He's like, yeah. I was like, nice. wow. I, really, I, I feel like it was a moment of, uh, I don't know, I felt the paternal approval, you know. like, sure. yeah. but, You know, it was like, it was so cool. He threw you the keys. He's like, yeah, here, eye. take the car. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't crash. I'm watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you kill all those songs, man. I, no, I, you're the, yeah. I, I, I wonder how much of that is just come from your jazz background or just from you. Like, Because when you said like not being afraid of your feminine side, I think that's a huge key with it. That's a huge key to jazz drumming that people, uh, certain people struggle with. No, I certain drummers struggle with, you know. I've never, uh, I've never been shy about it myself and, you know, but I definitely like from all my life and just uh, the way I always approach playing was like, I'm, I'm always coming from the inside. So it's nothing, you know, and it's, and uh, I'm not, like I said, not afraid of the the emotion and, you know, it's like I said, it is scary sometimes, but it's, but I like the challenge, you know, Yeah. if you're not going to put it out there genuinely, I just want them why do it. You know what else too? Like when you tap into that, it's almost, you're like a good exhausted Oh yeah. When you're done, yeah. you know, there's an exhaustion of holding it in that makes you like a stressed tired. But when yeah. you're able to completely like cut your veins and just let it like, that's a good, you feel like, like I love that elated. Feeling. You know, I do that. too. Like what? <laughs> yeah. You know, you're yeah. Exhausted, you know, but for good reason, you know, yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's a really satisfying uh, exhaustion. It's been I weird. I think it'll go- give you cancer if you don't get it out too. Like you're supposed to move it out because oh, sure. the stressed, exhausted, then works on a tumor or something. You know? <laughs> well, that's like, like that. That's like that great Bill Burr joke where he's like, you die at like 58 because you couldn't admit a puppy was cute. You know, like you're just, you're just pushing it down. You know, it's true though. It is, man. Yeah, yeah. we're really blessed to have that outlet to be able to release it too. You know. Well, and, and it's true too. Like when you think about like, I'll take fare thee well, for instance, like as an example where it re- literally transcended all age groups. I mean, you had teenage, you had young, young kids there with their parents. And then you had, I watched people who hadn't seen themselves since like 81 tour recognize each other and hug and cry. And it, I mean, it was yeah. just the most amazing thing. And you could see people literally just like cradling themselves, holding themselves and just bawling. And you could just, if you looked hard enough, you could see the memories, just everyone was having those moments where they were just letting it all out as you guys were. And, and I was bawling with them too. And it was weird songs. Crazy fingers was a song that I used to sit on the roof of my house when I would get home and just play it over and over and over and over again, the studio one. And, and it was just the most pretty song and I thought Jerry was just such like that singing was so great on the you know and then when you when you guys did that at I mean I was just like it all just came gushing out of me man like it was like uncontrollable and it was like watching little geysers go off across all the solar oh, yeah. field you, know? and, and you could feel that on stage too because it was just such a powerful uh you know <sighs> run of shows to where it was just like whoa okay you know like this yeah it's Everything quite, was perfect. You know, I don't really have arm hair, but it, 
it was standing, Mine's standing <laughs> up. Mine's standing <laughs> up for both of us. 